everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm here with Sky, my oldest Alaskan Klikai, and this is Copper, who's asleep. He is my youngest Alaskan Klikai. During the week, I asked Instagram for some inspiration to do a YouTube video, and I said, put forward some questions, and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. So today, I'm gonna do a short Q&A. Now, before I get started, this is obviously gonna be based upon my experience of Copper and Sky. So my answers are obviously gonna be very subjective. If you hear me answering a question and you think, well, that's not the case, I had a completely different experience with my Alaskan Klikai, then please do me a favor and leave a comment in the comment section below. So leave a comment underneath this video so other people who are looking to learn about Alaskan Klikai can get a more of a well-rounded view on these dogs and not just my opinion and my experiences. So without further ado, Sky, should we get going? What do you reckon? Copper, are you excited? Yeah? Copper gonna speak? Copper speak? Copper speak? Copper speak. Good boy. Copper speak. Copper speak. Good boy. So guys, before we start the question and answer session, I just want to ask you, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. I really would appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed already and sent amazing messages to me on Instagram saying how much they've enjoyed this content. I do find it amazing that people are enjoying these videos so much. And it is really quite humbling that people watch them before getting the click eye and find them useful. So I really do appreciate it. So the first question is from xmonster underscore fury x and he asked, or she, I'm not sure what the sex is based upon the username, how did you feel when you brought them to all together for the first time? How did they react the first time? Well, obviously we had Sky. she was our first Alaskan Klikai and we got her in September 2017. And around January 2018, we decided that we would like to get a second Klikai for a companion dog for Sky, And we just felt like that it was the right time in our lives to add a second dog. And we contacted the breeder that we got Sky from, Nordic Mini Husky. And we eventually ended up with Copper and she helped us in the decision making process. She recommended Copper's personality. She thought that he would mesh really nicely with Sky and that they would both bring out the best in each other. So we went up to Oregon and we picked up Copper and that was the first time that they met. But of course, Sky was there with about 10 to 15 Alaskan Klikai puppies. I guess her parents and her relations were all there as well. So Sky and Copper didn't exactly get to meet one-on-one -on -one at that stage. So then we drove back home from Oregon to California. It was about a six, seven hour drive. And we were quite nervous because Sky was giving Copper the evils the whole way down. And then when we got into our in-law's house or my in-law's house, we took Copper out of his crate or his um, travel carrier and Sky out of hers. And initially Sky was quite in Copper's face and she was kind of barking in a playful way, but you know, Copper was obviously trying to get adjusted to this whole new house that he just entered. But after two or three minutes, um, Sky came up to him really closely and Copper, basically in no uncertain terms, told her to give me some space through his... Copper basically told her to give him some space through his vocal cords. And that was it. He kind of said to her, look, I'm not going to be pushed around. And I think Sky was impressed by that and she respected that. And ever since they've had this brother-sister relationship, yes, they like to play, fight a lot. And yes, they do have their moments when they get annoyed with each other, but by and large, 95% of the time, they love each other so much. Just for example, on Wednesday, we had to take Sky to the vet and Copper was distraught that he wasn't with her. So it really is incredible, the bond that they've created together. Okay, let's do another question. So we got Perfect Parker. Some articles say that Alaskan Klikai may not get along with kids. What do you think? Well, if you follow our Instagram and TikTok, you'll know that Yasmin and I do not have children yet. So personally speaking, I can't really answer this question very thoroughly because they've only had limited experience to kids. But whenever Sky and Copper have met children, they've got along with them very well, especially Sky. Sky is by far the more social of my two Alaskan Klikai. She loves getting attention. She's very playful. She's also very gentle. Um, what else can we say about you, Sky? And she met quite a few kids in London just walking up and down the street and we'd go past families and they'd ask to say hello and Sky would always let them say hello to her and she'd really enjoy it. She'd usually actually flop down on the ground and almost roll onto her back looking for belly rubs. Copper, on the other hand, he's very shy. He doesn't really like to be stroked or held by anyone but my wife and I. So that's something that we have to work on with our socialization. Um, I think if he was around children all the time, he might find it a little bit overwhelming because he definitely likes his personal space. I say that as I'm stroking him. But I think Sky would do really well. So I think in answer to your question, 
it really depends on each individual at Asking Kikai and perhaps what you expose them to at a young age. Um, if I was to get an Alaskan Kikai now and knowing that hopefully we'll be starting a family in a few years, I would probably get my Alaskan Kikai puppy and bring them along to family events where I know there'll be young children and make sure it's in a controlled, safe environment and try and encourage the children to hold my Alaskan Kikai puppy, give the Alaskan Kikai puppy treats, all that kind of stuff. But your best bet could be trying to find an Alaskan Kikai social media account that does have children so you can get a better idea of what it's actually like because like I said, we don't have children, so I can only give you limited advice on that question. Okay, Copper, this question's about you, mate. You ready? G underscore A underscore Halbert underscore 18 asks, how vocal is Copper? Does he talk all the time or just in the videos? You ready, Copper? So recently, we taught Copper to speak. Now, previously, if you've seen our Alaskan Klikai Previously, if you've seen our Life of Klikai content, our videos on TikTok and Instagram, you'll probably know that Copper is quite vocal. And sometimes he will just talk by himself. There won't be, he won't need encouragement from me and Yasmin. He is quite talkative at times and depends on the situation, like around dinner time, if we're about to go out, if he's unhappy because Sky is taking up all the room on the couch, all that kind of stuff. But for the videos, sometimes we do have to encourage him to talk. So usually it would be howling at him like this. we thought that maybe we should you know formalize that a little bit more so now we have taught copper to speak it took about two or three days of rewarding him when we when he was being talkative if he was talking to us or howling we'd say speak give him a treat and pretty quickly he picked up on the fact that when we said speak we wanted him to talk so let's see if he's going to do it now so this is about two weeks since we've trained him on this copper copper speak <gasps> good boy copper speak Good boy. Come and speak. Good boy. So as you can see, the training's gone pretty well. He's now responding to speak. So I would say Copper is quite vocal, but it's not. Uh, while I would say Copper is quite vocal, he isn't vocal all day long, and by no means are, and by no means is our house really loud every day, twenty four seven. For the most part, Copper and Sky are actually really quite quiet. They sleep a lot. When we're chilling watching TV, they just chill with us. Even when they're playing, it's actually Sky who is the one who's a little bit noisier with her toys. Um, they do bark if they see someone coming to our house or going past the road outside our house. They do bark if they hear a weird sound. They're not, or, um, they do bark if they hear a weird sound. They will bark if they hear a dog outside or perhaps on the TV. But overall, I would say that he doesn't, he obviously doesn't talk all the, overall, I'd say he doesn't talk all the time. It's more with our encouragement. Or if he's feeling a particular way at a certain moment, um, he might do it. But otherwise, usually it's with our encouragement that he speaks. Okay, we've got another question, Sky. We've got a question from Michaela Diang Dong. I'm really sorry if I've said your name wrong. And she asks, why did you decide to get a Klikai instead of another breed? Well, the answer lies with my wife. She wanted a Klikai since she was 10. Her brother showed her a picture of a mini husky looking like Sky, and she had a heart set in this. So when I met my wife, when we were uh, in London together, um, she actually had another dog at the time. And then I moved out to America to be with my wife. And once we got married, we decided we wanted to have a, a dog, uh, you know, to start our family, not necessarily with children first. And Yasmin was very keen to get an Alaskan Klikai. So I went along with it because obviously they look like cool dogs and I've always had a fascination with Huskies. So I like the fact that they had some of their personality traits. So that's how we ended up with a Klikai. But I do love, well, I love all dogs. As part of my work on hellobark.com, I love all different dog breeds. I mean, I would have thousands and thousands of dogs if I had the space. I'd love to run a rescue shelter or something like that. Um, but I have grown up around German Shepherds and mixed breeds. So... If we got a third dog, we would be very tempted to get another Klikai just because we already have two Klikai and it'd be nice to expand our Klikai pack. But I think we'd also maybe like to rescue a dog. So we'll see what happens there if we do get a third dog. So Copper, we got a question, you ready? I'm gonna answer Roslar and I'm gonna answer Izzy Loves Dogs because the questions are kind of similar. 
So Izzy Loves Dogs asks, where did you get copper and sky from? That's quite simple, copper. Whoa. You okay? You okay? You okay? Where did you get copper and sky from? Izzy Loves Dogs asks, and the answer is we got them from Nordic Mini Husky in Oregon. And Roselar, in terms of your question, how long did we wait before we got one? Well, for Sky, I think we were on a waiting list for around three months because we wanted a black and white toy Alaskan Klee Kai with blue eyes. With Copper, we weren't as picky, so we were, weren't even on a waiting list. We basically, our breeder told us, I have these dogs that will be available in a month's time. And that's how we ended up with Copper. Hey, buddy. Yes, Mr. Copper. Amberly underscore 11 asks, do they like to cuddle? Mine does not, and it makes me sad. Does this come of age? Sky? Let's try it. We'll test it out. Sky, do you like to cuddle? Come on. Let's go and sit. Come on, Sky, sit down. Sky, sit. Good girl. Oh, come on. There you go. Sky, can you sit down, please? Okay, so Sky likes to cuddle. She cuddles with mom a lot. She even cuddles with me a lot. Usually it's between our legs. While I'm working at my desk, she will sit on my lap sometimes. So she'll be under the blanket, lying on us or between our legs. And as you can see, she is pretty happy here right now. Now, if, to test it out, I'm gonna change dogs. So Sky, come here, please. So Copper doesn't like to cuddle as much. It's gotta be on his own terms and you can't just pick him up and hold him. I'll try to try and do it for this video. Let's see how long he lasts. But usually Copper isn't a huge fan of cuddling. The only time he likes to cuddle is he will get up on a pillow next to us on the sofa. and He likes to kind of be touching us, but he doesn't want to be held by us. And in bed, he does like to cuddle alongside us. He kind of sits and lies down in the middle between me and my wife. And around six o'clock in the morning, he'll go on his back and he'll demand neck scratches and belly scratches. That's one of his favorite things in the morning. He likes that a lot. So I would say, again, kind of, you know, typical of what I say a lot of the time on this YouTube channel is that it really depends on each individual dog. So we've got Sky here. Sky, we've got Sky here who loves to cuddle. And we've got Copper here who doesn't really like to cuddle. He's gonna leave me. Can't believe you left me, Copper. Eco15 asks, our Klikai pup is sensitive to touch. How did you help Copper and Sky get comfortable? Um, Copper was, Sky was always really happy to be held and touched. Um, I think because when we first got her, we brought her everywhere. <clears throat> we lived in the USA, so we could bring her to a lot of stores. People always came up asking to hold her, asking to say hello. So she got used to meeting loads of people and she is really, really comfortable. Copper, on the other hand, he doesn't like to be held as much. I mean, he's tolerating me holding him right now, but he doesn't like to be held by strangers really. And that's really on me and my wife. We should have done more to socialize him and we've spoken to our breeder about it. And she recommends just bringing your Klikai everywhere with you. Obviously make sure that people ask to touch him or to hold your Klikai. And then give, once they are holding the Klikai, give them a treat to give your Klikai. So your Klikai learns that if I'm held by people, I get treats and hopefully that will help with them feeling more comfortable. But I'm not a qualified dog behaviorist. So if that is something that continues, you might want to speak to a dog behaviorist about it or perhaps your breed to get some advice. Um, let's go to tyr.klikai. What was it like taking them both home on the first night? I have my first night coming up soon. Well, I think this question really is more relatable to Sky because when we brought Copper home, we already had Sky and he didn't really play up at all on the first night. But Sky, we brought her home the first night we put her in a crate next to our bed. My wife had the foresight to buy a little toy that has a heartbeat in it. And that did really seem to help Sky. She felt like I think her mom was next to her. So she cried a little bit, but she didn't cry a huge amount. I would say the biggest thing about owning a, a puppy of any breed or of I think the biggest thing about owning a puppy of any breed is obviously those first two to three weeks you're going to, well, we were going. Those first two to three weeks, I know in my case, I was taking Sky out to go potty at least three times a night, four times a night. And when I say out to potty, we actually had a litter box with litter, cat litter in it on the recommendation of her breeder. So I'd bring her down to where that was and she would do her business and then we'd bring her back into the room. And we found that when she did cry, it was usually because she wanted to do her business. So I think that would be, you know, something to think about. You're probably gonna have to wake up a few times during the night to allow your dog to go potty. And maybe you wanna consider that toy that has the heartbeat in it, that might help. Um, and then decide, you know, what's your approach gonna be with separation anxiety. And if your dog wants to be close to you and you're worried that, you know, 
should you give her attention or should you leave her there and let her cry it out? There's two different ways of approaching that. So I think that's down to each individual person. So I would do some research on that. Okay, so the life of tea asks, do they chew on your things or are they behave in that way? Sky, have you ever chewed on my stuff? Whoops, have you ever chewed on my stuff? Have you? I don't think you have. Now Sky and Copper have never chewed on anything. Oh, uh, no furniture. They've never chewed on furniture clothes they're really good with food if we leave the room usually they won't touch anything on our plates um the only time i can ever think of one of them chewing something is when sky chewed some clothes that were left on top of a crate a wire crate when we went out went out shopping that was when she was only three or four months old and she was really suffering badly with separation anxiety and that was you know obviously not very clever on our part because if your dog it does have separation anxiety one of the symptoms is destructive chewing but apart from that, she's never chewed on anything else. And even though we have a bed and a blanket in the that dog crate with them when we leave them, they don't chew that either. So is there a secret to that? I'm not really sure. We may have, you know, we may have come across one by just giving them bully sticks from a very young age and they used to chew on them all the time. And maybe that helped to encourage them to just chew on bully sticks and nothing else. So maybe that's something to consider. But in our case, they never chewed on anything. So we got very lucky in that regard. Okay, so we're gonna do two more. So the second last one is from Lana underscore BM777. Do they sleep when you're dead? My dog does and it is amazing. We used to let them sleep on our bed all the time, but unfortunately for my wife, they tend to suffocate her because Sky wants to go between her legs and Papa wants to lie on top of her. So we tend to do it just on a Friday and Saturday because it was starting to give my wife back issues. But, you know, if it was up to me, I'd have them sleeping with us every single night. But then again, they don't sleep on top of me and I'm not the one being suffocated. So it'd be quite selfish of me to, uh, you know, encourage them to be in our bed every single night. But this definitely doesn't beat it when you have them in there and you're obviously falling asleep and you're, you feel very relaxed. And then the next morning when you wake up and your dog's on its back looking at you for belly scratches, I mean, it's a great way to start the day. So I can definitely see the benefits and the merits of it. And you also asked another question, actually. So this is going to be my last question. I'm a vet and I was wondering, do they have any complications? Well, we haven't really experienced too many health issues so far. The biggest one really is just sensitive stomachs. Sky is very sensitive with food and she used to go through spells and not wanting to eat or she would do um, her, her bowing where her butt would be in the air because she was having tummy problems and tummy pain. Well, we recently did a um, dog allergy test and we realized that Sky, and Sky is actually allergic to beef and fish and white rice. And these are all things that we've been feeding her regularly. And since we've cut it out, her tear stains have almost cleared up. Now they do come back every so often, but I think it's because sometimes we buy treats from the shop and we should probably check the ingredients a little bit more carefully. And there might be traces of beef in them and that could be why. Um, otherwise she's really, really good and she's very happy with her food and she is much healthier. And you've had no issues, Sky, have you, apart from your bruised elbow? That's it. So I'd say overall, so far they have both been quite healthy. It's just the dog food that we weren't really aware of, her allergy issues, and it took us a while to find the right dog food for them. But now we found it, they absolutely love it. So guys, that was our Q&A. Thank you to everyone who contributed a question. And if you guys enjoyed this Q&A and found it useful, Leave a comment below so I'll know to do it again. Um, I probably will do another one, to be honest, in a couple of weeks or so. If there's any issues that I talked about and you would like me to do a dedicated video on it, or you have any ideas for a dedicated click high video that I should do on a certain topic you want to learn more about, and if I haven't done it already, again, leave a comment and I'll try and get around to it and do it. Thank you to everyone who watches my YouTube channel. And if you have stayed until this point, please do hit subscribe. We'd love to have you as a subscriber and thank you for showing an interest in our Alaskan Klikai. Oops, sorry Sky. So just for anyone who's not aware, this is Copper, this is Sky. We are Life of Klikai on Instagram and TikTok, so give us a follow there and send us a message if you've watched one of our videos. I really do appreciate and love every time I get a DM on Instagram saying, Hi, we've been watching your YouTube videos and we found them really interesting and it's a real and it, when I get those messages, it really makes my day. And it's amazing that people actually find these videos useful. So I appreciate all the support that everyone's given so far. So that's all from us for now, guys. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, like I said. And thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day.